honor to be here, and it's an honor to be a part of this uh, very, very important event. Uh, I'm sure that the state homeland security representatives are fully concentrated in Pella today. <laughs> I'm certain that all of the monitors of all forms are geared in this direction because I think there's a clear understanding that this is probably the most significant event that's taking place in this state this weekend. <laughs> I uh, had the privilege of meeting uh, Eddie Moore Jr. Uh, several years ago uh, during his participation in uh, VOTA, Brothers of the Academy, and um, he mentioned at that time that he was involved in working with a annual conference in Iowa that was called a White Privilege Conference. I say, what? <laughs> and as Tim Phillips just pointed out, I was amazed, shocked, and curious as to why in Iowa a White Privilege Conference would be held. And I thank Tim Phillips for laying out 10 good reasons why it would be held and would be held here. I also at that time decided that either Eddie Moore Jr. was a very courageous genius or he was completely out of his mind. <laughs> I have not yet concluded which is the case. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, he mentioned that at some point in the future uh, development of this conference he would like for me to come out and I said, yeah, sure, and uh, hoped that he would forget it. <laughs> but uh, he has persisted over the last couple of years. And so, voila, here I am. And I'm very, very honored to be here. Thank you all so very much. There are many familiar faces, the uh, BOTA group and the SOTA group, uh, who I know very well and have been permitted by its leadership and its uh, uh, board to be one of its distinguished elders, and I'm so honored to be so. Uh, Dr. Lee Jones, the founder and uh, president since its origin, uh, and is also one of my very, very, very best friends in the world who looks after me and cares for me uh, when everybody else has forgotten me. He has the unfortunate situation of being in Tallahassee with me, and, and Tallahassee is Florida's version of Pella. So we need each other very much there. So he's been certainly a, a lifesaver, and uh, so certainly I, I'm very glad to be wherever he and Bota and Sota I happen to be as well. Any number of former students of mine, uh, uh, one member of Sota, Rita Walker, who uh, met me at the airport in Cincinnati on yesterday, and we spent three hours getting caught up on her new professoriate at the University of South Carolina, fresh PhD in clinical psychology, a brilliant young woman who's going to change the world of psychology for the, all the world, because she's one of my students. And <laughs> that's reasonable. <laughs> um, probably, my, my, probably my only persisting and long-standing, uh, you know, people like to say, you know, some of my best friends are black kind of thing. Uh, one of my best friends is white. And uh, uh, I've known him for too long. He was an undergraduate student of mine uh, at Florida State. And I simply thought he was just another student. And he turned out to be an absolute pest. And uh, he clung on to me like absolutely, I guess, like hair lice. And uh, <laughs> which black folks don't have too much of. And, uh, he has now, for close to 20 years, been a very, very loyal friend and devo devoted follower of my insanity. Uh, in fact, he believed almost everything I told him. He even ended up in the heart of Africa several years ago in Ghana and called me and said, now, what did you say I was supposed to see here? And, uh, but uh, that, that's Paul Bike, and uh, Paul who always, uh, Paul, stand up and say hi to the folks there. Very good friend of mine. And so I told I knew that he has been very concerned about this issue of white racism. Um, and he has developed an approach to it 
which is an approach that I have shared with him. Because I've always believed that the solution or the uh, approach to resolving racism was not for white people to convince black people that they were nice people, but for white people to talk to other white people about the difficulties of being white people. And that to engage in trying to address an understanding of racism from a white perspective. I have told Paul, as I tell people all the time, that I am not an expert on diversity. I do not try to teach white people what it means to be black. I'm not an instructor in terms of helping to release white people from their confusion by being racist. Uh, I am not one who is committed to trying to change the paradigmatic structure to a multicultural perspective so that we can understand the dynamics of diversity and understand the integral, integral commitment that we all have to doing the things we have to do. I don't do any of that. My work is to help black folks better understand who they are, what they are, and how to get free. That's the work I do. And I don't, and I don't apologize for that. So when I heard that this conference was going to uh, be taking place, I contacted Paul and told him, I said, Paul, this may be a place where you can meet somebody, some people who are doing the same things that you want to do. And that is trying to correct the problems of white racism by addressing those issues within the confines of the white community. And I think that you'll be able to find some real partners here. And I talked to him last night and he says like you know he's been in heaven since he got here on yesterday he said that tim wise and many other people in their presentations just really fired him up so he's really ready now to go back to tallahassee and uh, destroy white racism in tallahassee and around the world good luck paul <laughs> okay i want to actually do three things this morning and I'm going to try to, uh, 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 Eddie has already told me that I don't really have to worry too much about the time. He will pull me down when my time has run out. So I won't watch the watch, I'll just like watch for the, uh, uh, the, the hook to pull me off. But I want to talk about three things in, in the time that I have. One is I want to describe for you my understanding of white privilege, of what white privilege is and what it's not. I want to talk about a phenomena that I don't see on the agenda of this program, and that is black privilege. And then I want to talk about black collaboration with white privilege. Those are three points I want to make. And uh, hopefully I can do it without going too far off uh, the mark. If I lay out my intentions, then you'll know when I have so far digressed that I've forgotten what I'm talking about. So at least you'd know where I want to go as I start off anyway. Number one, <clears throat> I want to talk about what white privilege is not. Because I think it's very important that we not confuse white privilege with a variety of allied conditions. I, want, I think it's very important that we not confuse the issues of white privilege with uh, analogous behaviors that we might in fact begin to confuse the metaphor with the similarity, or the metaphor with the identity of the two things. So first of all, white privilege is not masculine prerogatives. Masculine prerogatives and the consequent sexism and, and patriarchalism, patriarchalism that follows from that is in fact allied and similar conditions, but it is not the same thing as white privilege. White privilege is not cl 